Hi, folks. Welcome to another exciting edition of What the Hell Did They Do? Tonight, we're going to dig into the uh, manual downfeed on this uh, Cincinnati 1D uh, mill. It's a very nice mill. It's in rough shape, but I'm slowly going through it and getting everything back together. But before we get to that, I wanted to say something. Uh, thank you for all the people that do subscribe. You might notice I don't badger you over the head with thumbs up and subscribing and all that. And the only reason I'm even monetized, which I make about $112 a month doing this, which basically doesn't even keep me in camera gear. The only reason I'm monetized is so I can cut out most of the ads. I have a bare minimum. I hate ads as much as you do, but back to life nowadays. Anyway. I've had a few comments over the years that I'm rambling, boring, disjointed, technically incorrect, and uh, oh, I'll probably kick dog. Well, that's true. What you guys don't see is the hours and hours and hours of film that I throw away trying to make it not so rambling. But when I feel there's an important point to make, I'm going to tell you about it. That's just the way it is. This isn't a TikTok channel. Jimmy Dresta goes pretty quickly through his. I personally like longer videos. I personally like to know more in depth. So that's what I'm doing. Don did suggest that I uh, I show you what this would look like in a TikTok version. So here it is. You didn't know an old man could move that fast, did you? Anyway, I'm sorry if you don't like it. My approval rating's right about 95% on the people that do watch it. So I'm just going to keep on doing what I do. And if you'd like to watch, I do. Thank you. All right, now on to the, the problem child. Now, since you guys saw it last, I've replaced the power feed. All that had to come off. I had to take the head off uh, another time to be able to take that off. Right up in here is the edge of the, the casing. And there's a shaft that goes up and has a, a gear that drives off of the, uh, the top spindle and powers this. Then it has a gear that goes all the way through the head. Well, in between the head and uh, that casing was a seal. And that was a booger to find one, but I did. And the seal's replaced. All this is back up and sealed up. And now we're into finishing it on this side over here with the handle. So, uh, oh, cleaned off the table, by the way. And surprise, surprise, out of this whole table, there's only two little boo-boos. That's pretty good. We're going to go through the rest of the bottom end. The bottom end is pretty good. But what I want to show you today is what the hell did they do? As I said, I replaced the seal that runs through and is shaft on this side. The other morning I was getting ready to drive to Arkansas in a hurry. I needed this out of the way, so I decided to put all this together real quick while it was all sitting there. And so I started and put it together and it wouldn't work. So thought about it all the way to Arkansas. When I got back, I took it apart to see what the heck was going on. And what I found kind of surprised me, but someone's been in here before me. I kind of had a hint because there was a wire wrapped around this handle so that they could use the down feed. Well, what I thought was all wrong when I pulled it out wasn't the whole matter. Now, this works independently until you pull it out and engage some dog gears, 
and then it'll make the shaft here go up and down. I got it kind of taken apart so the keys are out. This is the inside of the uh, cover here. And what I had thought was wrong was the dogs on this dog gear and the dogs in here were worn out. And they were. So I tigged all this up with some uh, hard rod and then tigged this one up and then I uh, ground it back down to tolerances. It fits real well now. I was really happy with it and I thought, oh, life's going to be great. Except uh, it wasn't. I'll show you why. Now, doesn't that handle look nice? Another little tip for you guys that I was given. If you don't own one of these and you restore machines or polish metal or do anything, this is a great little tool. I mean, it goes to... Heck, I even polished up my my pliers. This thing is uh, battery powered. You can buy these little Rolock discs of different sizes. I got a bunch of them coming now. Medium, you can put sanding discs, you can put buffing discs on them. They just snap right on or twist right on like a quarter by two thread and it just uh, really good. And there's a I bought the kit so I had a battery and uh, uh, a charger with that and then I bought this little uh, die grinder uh, bear for $99 and it you can put all kinds of things on it too it's more like a Dremel uh, size tool head whereas that one takes a quarter inch anyway that's my tip for the day Back to this. Now, as you can see, this dog gear fits on a shaft right here. It's got a keyway, and this handle goes into a groove. And when you push this down, it engages the teeth in this. And then you can spin the whole thing up and down and that'll raise the quill up. Well, there's a fine line of adjustment here. The shaft goes all the way through and it has another dog gear on the other side and that attaches to the, the, the gearbox for the down feed. So I've got to be very careful in to keep the dimensions uh, close so that it'll do both functions. It'll go over there, it's spring-loaded and pushes over and then when you hit this it'll engage in this. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let me move this handle. I tell you, can y'all see? Tell you, Musty has ruined me. This used to be my favorite hammer. Now this one is. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can pull that on out. Just drop out of there. That shouldn't happen if it was normal. I don't have all the parts in there. Anyway, you can see this fits into this gear recess and that pivots on the shaft, lets it go back and forth. That all fits in this housing that I think you saw me doing the other day where I had to go and redo all of this here because it was just so egg shaped and out of ground. And while I was at it, I took that little uh, buffer and got all the paint off of it so Don can paint it easier. This is the shaft that goes all the way through. It's spring-loaded and it's got a uh, ring clip right there 
that makes everything bind together. It also keeps this shaft from going too far, but the spring does all that function and when it, there's another one of these over there, it hits the wall and it can't go any farther. That's good because you want that to be engaged. What I found when I was putting all this back together, is somebody's been there before me. This gear did not come off of this machine. I don't know where they got it, but it doesn't fit. And the reason it doesn't fit is because it's too thick. From this surface here to this surface over right in here, right, right there, it's too thick. There are two grooves on this uh, shaft here that hold little clips. And the only way to put this on and get that clip in on this side is to drive it on. And when you do, you drive that clip farther in. Well, I was in a hurry, couldn't get it in there, so I took my little tool I made. I had one of these set up, but I, I just took it in there, stuck it on there, and tapped it in, put the clip on, put it together, started crying, almost. Now we know what the problem is, is I gotta fix this somehow. And this is where you gotta start using your head, guys. I can run over there and throw that on the belt sander and sand that surface right there off, slide it on there, put the clip back on, Bob's your uncle. If I do that though, I run a great risk that this dog is now too short to engage properly with that. So I don't like that idea. I could take and bore a little uh, recess around here so that this surface goes around that clip and lets it go in far enough. But that's doing the same thing. So the only thing that I can do that will keep this dimension the same and give me as much engagement as possible with this is to recess in here enough to get that clip in. And I don't know if you can see it, but let me see if I can get... Well, I tried a little trick here. I put a telephoto lens on this thing so you could see it better. This is the gear. This is the ring groove that holds this gear on. And there's the other gear uh, ring back there and its screw. And if I put this on, you can plainly see that that groove is back there. Now I'm gonna put a little mark on here, see if I can see how far I need to go back in. I need to go back in almost an eighth of an inch. I know that this lever can pull out far enough. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to recess all of this area here so I can get another ring into that group. All right. Well now, well now that we know what the problem is, keeping this thing from fitting properly, and we know what the solution is going to be, it's how in the heck can I do this? I took a file and ran over this thing, and it's it's hardened. It's pretty hard. I don't know how hard, but I don't have a tester. The perfect thing would, if I had an internal ID grinder, I could put it on there and grind that little bit. I don't have that. I'm gonna give it a shot on old Bob. This is an inch and a half 
outside diameter. I have a huge collection of collets for Bob, and I just happen to have an inch and a half collet. So I'm going to put it in here, and we're going to spin it up, and we're going to see if a carbide uh, can't shoot gum and do two things. I'm going to put it in here, and we're going to see if a carbide cemented carbide tool will touch it. I got tons of these things, so I don't really care about if I ruin that one. I got 100 more. So let me go turn Bob on and get you all situated so you can see. Said I got so many tools for Bob. Those are all the threading templates for the automatic threader. You put these on a spindle, put this on an arm, and basically when you're ready to thread it follows them down. It doesn't have a threading uh, or any carriage uh, shafts at all. It all follows that. You can't do a really long thread, but you can. Then I have all kinds of tools for tool holding. I don't have any drill bushings. I gotta find some drill bushings. And down here in a drawer, Bob's got all kinds of collets. More collets here. Got a uh, three jaw and four jaw and face plate all down in the bottom. I'm pretty well tooled. The only thing I know I don't have is drill bushings. Of course, I never even knew there were drill bushings for it until one of you guys told me. Thank you. Now you may hear some engine noise going out there, motor noise. That's from the uh, face converter. Bob's running off my 10 horsepower face converter. I have two in the shop. Uh, a 10 and a 20. All right, we're going to start Bob up. Let's go to range two. Let's go down to 800 for just a test. Way in there, so it's kind of an interrupted cut. Hey, that seemed to cut it. I think we can make progress. This we need more light, though. Yes, sir, it cut it. Very good. Leave a little bit of the edge over there so I can really tell how much I cut. Take it all the way out. Let's 
pull this back. And because it's a collet, I know it's going to relocate and it's not that real critical. I'm just trying to get some relief. I'm going to pull it out of the machine. Made a nice cut. Let me go over there and see if that's enough. It's not quite deep enough. I need about a 30 second of an inch. Let's bring this over there and kind of touch it up. Okay. Should be touching off there. I'm going to bring it over on that gauge. We'll see how accurate Bob's gauges are. try that it's doing a nice job okay guys after a few more adjustments I finally got this recess down to where Looks pretty nice in there. Come on. Where that key, or excuse me, that clip will go into that groove. Will not rattle. And so I'm going to put it together again. Hopefully for one more time. Or one last time. Still got the ball bearing in there. used to think Musty was crazy for using a body hammer for everything, but this is a really, really nice tool. Good man, Musty. All right. Let's see if we can get this clip on without flying across the room. Look at that. That is in there, senor. See how that comes out? And now, when this goes on, and you do that, it should make the spindle go up and down. And it does! You, Yay! With no wire attached. How about that, sports fans? <coughs> now I'm going to adjust that um, ball before I forget it. Tap this home.
Not really sure what that ball's for. But just a guess. To keep this handle from flopping around if this is turning from the, the drive over here. See now, see how that went in? Can you see? See how that's turning with the hand wheel? When I pull it out, that disengages the quill. And then when I put that back in, it goes back in and locks in. So I'm thinking this is pretty close to being done. Maybe a little bit more tightness. We can always adjust that later. There we go. All right, and maybe, heck, it may even need a new screw. I mean, excuse me. Heck, it may even need a new uh, spring. good all I need to do is find the screws for this away we go